when you're dealing with large volumes of data, like you are in pharma, uh, my, my question for you is, what is, in your experience, is, is there a right system to use? Is there a right DLT? Obviously, you're a big fan of Hedera. Yeah. Is Hedera the right system? What are the advantages, disadvantages compared to something else? And how do you make that decision? Yeah, yeah well, you know, so I, I wish the answer were that straightforward. It, it's always more nuanced. And, and as you know, this, Dasha, we talked about this a lot of times, you know, you need to you need to kind of look at what it is that you actually want to do. So there's a, there's an application, there's software, there's architecture, there's there's a data element that you have to figure out. Uh, and blockchain is just a playground in a theme park, right? You know, my right. whole you know theme park thing, right? So, and I think you got to keep it in context. So, look, you could use the Bitcoin network, and many people do. And again, Bitcoin network is not the same as Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency. It's, it's the network is the, the the network you know infrastructure that allows you to have Bitcoin, but but you can do a lot more, you know. And, yeah. and many companies like Microsoft, as, as example, has publicly talked about the commitment to doing things on the Bitcoin network. If you look at um, there's there's a bunch of protocols that are building on the net Bitcoin network because it's proven to work. Um, however, you don't necessarily need to do all of the work on the Bitcoin network. You could do some of it off you know off the chain. Could use what's called layer two, you know, kind of technologies where, where really some of the work is taken off chain and, and you essentially reconcile transactions on the chain or you do it at, at minimum with minimum kind of uh, metadata or minimum amount of information. So there's, there's literally like a thousand ways to kind of skin the cat, if you like. So uh, I don't think you can just make a, you know, kind of a carte blanche statement saying this is better than that without having like some kind of a consideration to what's really happening uh, and what the use case is. What I would say though is, is this, some of the next generation technologies that are out there, Hedera is, is one that we use. Um, it's not really blockchain, it's not technically blockchain, it's DLT. However, what they have figured out is, is a mechanism where you can get to consensus, which is really the, the, the most important thing for, you know that you gotta do, which is for, for, for nodes or computers to essentially agree that a transaction happened and that was the transaction. To so get to consensus very, very quickly at, at very large scale, but also, and, and this is the important thing, I think, in a very economically viable way, right? Because if you look at Ethereum right now, layer one Ethereum, the main at Ethereum, even if you remove the scaling, you know, kind of questions and conversations and use layer two technologies and things like this, or you do things offline, the transaction fee is pretty high. You know, I think it's, I forget exactly, like maybe like $2.50, something like this, uh, to have a transaction on the mainnet. That's a vast difference than, than like 0. 0.0001 cent on the Hedera sure. network, right? So that's one of the reasons, one of the key reasons why we like, you know, Hedera, and, and because we're proponents of doing real-time transactions to the tunes of millions of transactions a day. Right. right. If you're going to do that, you need to have a model where the, the underlying cryptocurrency, that the underlying token, uh, has to be has to allow you to do that at scale, but also econo in an economically reasonable way. Because otherwise, no nobody would ever buy our technologies. Because you're kind of like, if you're like, uh, you know, your shipping costs is just too high. It winds up yeah. being too much money for for what then people would say. You know, essentially is is a is a regulatory, a regulatory or an auditing type of function as opposed to, you know, operational function. So, so what what I think is interesting is you you talk about the advantages of Hedera, which which obviously are apparent when you're talking about the cost. But one might argue that Ethereum or the blo uh, the blockchain, the, the Bitcoin backbone, if you will, has mm -hmm. has proven to be a um, a time tested system. Yeah. And and really, one of the big things you see, by, whether it's in tech and you're talking on mainframes, or you're talking about pharma, and you're talking about just data and pharma, is trust mm -hmm. and and knowing that the system works. Yeah. Would would people argue that? And I'm speaking as as a novice. Um, would people argue that Hedera may be all those things, but we don't really know because we haven't tested them out yet? Yeah, you know, I mean, but this is you actually hit on kind of the underlying kind of crux of of you know what you have to consider when you're looking at at again a public blockchain right because mm -hmm. we're we're talking about if you're you know 
talking with enterprise blockchain or, or private blockchain, you really don't have this, this concept of, of network effect, token economics, things like this. That really kind of comes into public blockchain. And as you know, you and I have spoken about this many, many times. I'm a proponent of, of using public blockchain because ultimately I think the biggest thing is this idea of transparent trust, trust right. and transparency and, and reporting on it, right? Yeah. Regardless of how much money it costs or how quick it is and things like this. So that's a very good counter argument, which is, hey, look, Bitcoin's been around for 12 years, never been hacked. You know, there's millions of nodes around the world, right? It's permissionless. Right. So anybody can, you know, just download, you know, the software, get the GPU, you're up and running. But, you know, it, it may take a couple of days for you to index all the blocks, but then you'd be a node, right? right. All that is, is good. It makes perfect sense. Hedera doesn't have that. There's like 16 nodes and, and those are permission nodes because they're basically the 16 council members right out there. And, and you know, in time, there will be a, you know, permissionless model where, where you and I could have nodes on it, things like this. But hasn't got there so therefore hasn't test hasn't passed the test of time hasn't passed it like the like true test of, of maturity and, and growth those are all good you know counter arguments right. um, what i would say though is my i guess additional kind of line of thinking is let's look at the business plan let's look at things like so with with a public blockchain really ultimately the the more nodes you have the more secure it is because what you're doing is that you're you're really Typically for the modern ones, you're staking the tokens and if yeah. the tokens are, are distributed, you know, kind of somewhat proportionally and, and the more nodes you have, the more tokens that are in play, the more accounts you have, the more likely they're secure, right? It's, right. it's it kind of comes down to this, you know, and again, there's a lot of mathematical proofs behind this that I don't think we need to get into at this moment, but all to say it's kind of this, this cash 22, right? Because in order to be more secure, you have to grow the network. Right? right. In order to grow on a network, you have to have more people. So they have to believe that it's secure. Right. Right. You know, and, and this is really where the, to me, the cleverness of token economics comes into it. It's, it's this game theory, this to and fro of, of, well, how do you grow the network and get quote network effect? You know, if you're just starting out, right. right? You know, and how do you incentivize people to do so? How do you convince them? So I think where I am with this is that I look at some other factors such as the, the team. Uh, the, the Hedera team, I really like the, the seasoned professionals, they have a, a game plan that's like at least 15 years, you know, they, mm -hmm. they, they, they basically publicly have publicly have said that they want Hedera to be the kind of like, um, trust layer for the internet and, and have a hundred year business plan. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and you know, this in, in our world of healthcare and, and pharma, I mean, units of, of time are measured in decades, it's only right. months, right? right? It's only decades. Right. So. <laughs> It would be ludicrous for us to go to somebody and, and say, hey, you know, um, boss over at, at Novartis, uh, you know, let's, this, this investment is going to pay off in, in a year. Right. Nobody really is going to take it seriously. So I kind of like that. that it's, it's more seasoned. It's, it's laid out. But also, I, I like that there is a token release cycle that's mm -hmm. proportional to this idea of, of a long-term growing of the network effect and long-term security of this public blockchain. And again, not to get into all of the details, but it's, it's designed so that somebody could not, at least very, it would be very, very difficult to gain the system to essentially have one miner that can basically control the entire network. Because if one miner can do that, then all of a sudden you have a leader node and it's no longer a public blockchain. It's, now you're talking about basically a private blockchain with a different label. Again, right. well, we could spend hours in all of these like areas because every one of them really deserves if you want to get technical, deserves a you know conversation. But the net of it is, you have to look at some other factors than just the consensus algorithm or, or the white paper. You have to look at the team. You have to look at like the, the, the token circulation timeline and, and and really ultimately, again, look at the governance model. That's to me one of the, the things I really like about Hedera is this governance model. You know, they, they put it out there as public. This the, the thirty nine nodes eventually, and, and they're three-year terms, the global distribution, the, the fact that they're essentially set up to, to have 139th ownership of the network. And, and you have companies like, like Boeing and Google and, and you know, Wipro and, and, you know, like big companies, uh, UCL, University College of London, et cetera. These are big institutes that have been around for a long time and likely to be around and not necessarily to, to kind of like 
colluded with each other for a reason. So all of those things, you know, kind of like count away this, this argument that is not yet proven. So, so you talk, you're, you're right. It, it does help counterweight the argument that it's not proven. The question then becomes, um, let, let's say you want to invest into a Hedera system. Um, is, is that potentially the right system as you start considering things like asset tracking and as you start considering things like, because that's track and trace. You, you talked about track and trace a little yeah. bit ago. So talk, talk to me a little bit about your experiences creating processes around track and trace. 